Boom. Welcome back, everybody. Show number. Show number. The numbers. 935, I think. God. Six. I don't know. That's a lot. You know what last week's guest was? Uh, Adam? No. No, that was week before. Last week. Oh, was that two weeks ago? Yeah. No. Oh. The football player. Oh, oh yeah. Um, uh, um, Femi or uh, no. uh, the other? Come on. Damn. Brandon? No. That's the foundation. Do I got to look yeah. it up? Reggie, Reggie, Reggie. Reggie. Reggie was awesome. Reggie was good. Wow. I had a good time. No, Reggie was awesome. What's Reggie's last name? Um, Stevens. Yeah, Reggie Stevens. Stevens. Yeah, and the Reggie Stevens guy. Foundation is a gigantic awesome. part of our community. Yeah. That was a and, uh, and, and it was really cool. <laughs> you know what? Time. You know what blew me away about Reggie Stevens is that he um, pretty much donates his time to help his these foundation. kids. Yeah. yeah, to help these kids. Yeah. Um, be better athletes, be better yes. uh, students, yeah. and to learn how to sell themselves to colleges. And uh, and it was such a refreshing thing to see that. That's right. cool. Yeah, and uh, and the success he's had. Yeah. It was cool. So that way, if you want to watch that or go to the podcast, you can see that on Santa Cruz Waves if you scroll down the page. Um, and, the, and the week before that... The week was, before that... It was a show where... We had some technical difficulties. It was called oh. Tequila... And uh, <laughs> and we had Adam on the show, but we decided that we were going to do a rerun, and here we are tonight, yeah. which is awesome. So show yeah. number 930 what? You put that very mildly, TC. I, I, yeah. yeah. Very mildly. Well, you know, we, 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 broke some, we broke some stuff. Yeah. We had a good time. Jimbo was here. Jim Phillips was yeah, part Jimbo, of the problem. Yeah, Jimbo definitely threw some gasoline on the fire. And uh, yeah. Eastside East East Eatery definitely contributed a little. We'll it give Derek a There's a lot of people show. involved. Honestly, you know what it felt like? It right. felt like it was a punk rock show, but there was only four of us. <laughs> <laughs> it literally felt like a 90s punk rock show, but there was no band. There was just the four of us. Yeah, and it, it's, it turned into a pretty wild night, which we can't share with you, unfortunately. Um the truth is, I called Neil about an hour after the show, and I was like, "Dude, you got to pull that thing off the air." Two o'clock in the morning, my phone rings. Right. Neil, text me. You got to pull that shit down. I go, "Was it that bad?" Because I don't remember. I don't remember. You know, we're starting over. I look at. I look. The first fifteen seconds ago, you're right. You got to pull right. that shit off. Well, Adam, welcome back. Yeah, thanks. We've had you on the yeah. show. I think yeah. it's probably like four or five. I mean, I've been the... here with a couple other people before. Well, and stuff. We, we, we've done we, it down in the radio station exactly. a couple times. We were here with VC. We I did. We did us. the Point Break Live Point thing. Break that live. was really fun. We were here with Marcel. Yeah, Broco. Marcel. Piece of work. You know? <laughs> and I'm sure everyone's really happy to have him back in the neighborhood. Oh, yeah. Yeah. awesome. Is he back? Well, I mean, he he's larger than life. He might live over the hill, but he, you think he's here. I feel well, it. say his name. He's like Beetlejuice. One more time, you say his name. Let's go over the ranch. He's all happily living in Los Gatos. Yeah, he's got... Uh, Serino. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey. Fuck Santa Cruz. I'm, I'm living in... I'm like, oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah, he rented the beach house. Yeah. He's, hey, he, he's not here until he's out there. And then he's all here. <laughs> and he's bro, all you'll hear about it, too. <laughs> <laughs> well, welcome back, Adam. Thanks, DC. Glad to uh, be back, man. So, Glad just to back. fill in everybody on the uh, who's watching, Adam, uh, you are a... Uh, a, a, a local, born and raised in Capitola, right? Yeah. Raised yep. in Capitola. Um, you uh, started surfing young. You worked yep. your way up to the amateur ranks. Yep. Yep. You, went yep. the, you had the sponsors. Yep. You had the trips. Yep. You had the, the, the trophies. Yep. You yep. did it all. And then got the steep back backside of the cliff to it on the end of it. Well, know? I mean, I know the ride up there is amazing. Yeah, it's a lot of fun. A lot of fun. You're traveling. Fun. You're, you know, you checks are coming in. You were good to all the people on the way up. Oh, yeah, yeah. Look, look, I had a great time, you right. know. And um, I wouldn't have wanted to do anything other than what I was doing, mm -hmm. you know, at the time. But in hindsight, yeah, I probably could have diversified a little more and not been um, so, uh, say, strapped into to my life in surfing, you know. Because your degree in surfing doesn't mean anything else other, outside of surfing. So True. Just right. trying to, you know, you know, as you get older, you go, gosh, you know, I was all in on this. But, you know, I see some of my friends now. Uh, like Sean Burns, for an example, Guy Shreds here, local ripper, mm -hmm. uh, but works at O'Neill's, got a degree, went to San Luis Obispo, you know, got a degree in school, and uh, look, now he could win the contest and run the and run the uh, and run it and run the business mm -hmm. and run the show. So, um, and when you say that, you, you say like I would have done some things differently with I, your surfing I, career. Well, no, I think I would have taken some of the opportunities given to me had they had I been able to do that again you know mm -hmm. there's some opportunities that I had that I really didn't take uh, seriously at the time opportunities as far as business or business education? like working education? for Novak a perfect example mm -hmm. you know um, uh, I, I ran a surf magazine before I tried to surf, tried to make a surfboard company uh, um, you know I've had some a lot of failures 
Um, but obviously, without those, I wouldn't be where I am today. Not that I'm, I'm doing really well. You right. know, I'm still sort of struggling. But my point is, is that I would have liked to have had, uh, you know, stayed around some of these guys longer to get a good degree from them. You know? Right. Because, I mean, I, I, I... That's all it is. My, my degree in school was... Well, I didn't have it, you know. But you hang around Richard Novak or Pat mm-hmm. O'Neill or Randy right. French long enough, right. you're mm-hmm. going you're gonna to get some really good, you know, information. Yeah. And I get that. You because know, I did that. Yeah, yeah. You know, you and I yeah. ran in the – we're the, yeah. close to being the same age, yeah. and we ran in the same circles, and we, yeah. and we pretty much had the same people in our lives. And, and yeah. that was my edu- – I mean, I went to college. Right. But my education was working for the people like you talk about. Yeah. And, uh, and then listening. you got a street location, education. It's, well, it's kind of like um, the school of hard knocks, you right. know. It's, um, yeah. You learn an industry, and then you work your way up through the industry. Um, a lot of, I mean, nowadays, a lot of pro surfers are coaches like Galley yeah. and people, you know, they move on. Yeah. From when you grew up as a kid yeah. and, uh, through the years, what's different between now and for a kid? What do you reckon? What do you, what do you, what could you say to a kid now trying to go through the ranks of being a professional? Well, I don't uh, think there's much opportunity now as a professional, surfer. as a professional surfer, you know, it seems like to be a professional surfer, either a professional surfer to me now is a competitive surfer who's pursuing competition. Um, but there's a, there's other avenues to be a surfer. You know, you can earn, you have your own YouTube page. You could re- do your own blogs or whatever. Right. Uh, but unfortunately, like the structure that was there um, with the sponsors and the support is just not there anymore. Right. So you've noticed that a lot of the events are a lot smaller now. There's very few people that are surfing the events. Um, that ebbs and flows and comes and goes. Uh, you'll see it goes down around recessions and goes up at, mm-hmm. at the nice times, just like anything else. As right. soon as there's more money to it. Well, if you uh, look at our our, our town. I think our number one professional surfer would be Nat Young. Yeah, yeah. Who's really not have the sponsor support. No, he has no sponsors. Yeah. Is Nat kind of on the back nine of his career? Uh, uh, I, you, you would say that, but look, Nat is a gamer, right. and he could have his day in the sun and be playing the game as good as anybody tomorrow. Um, so we'll see what, you know, but only time will tell. Obviously, when he had his... his uh, year on the tour in his sophomore year, his freshman and sophomore year, he killed it. He did so good that it would be nearly, uh, really hard to come back from that, right? Right. So usually you have a, what they call a sophomore slump. Nat was, ended up in the top five or ten of the world this sophomore year, you know, mm-hmm. so, um, but yeah, he's the... And how's most, he doing on the Challenger Tour right now? I, I haven't... I don't know. Yeah. I don't know. I don't, I don't think he's, you know, if he was killing it, he'd be on tour. Right. Right. Mm-hmm. Um, but he's, you know, he's got family and baby and... Mm-hmm. Um, you know, obviously taking on the next phase. And that's just it, you know, that's where and anybody comes to that point in their career, you know, where you're going, okay, look, I have to, uh, I have my hell to pay to the real world for being a surfer for so long, you know, mm-hmm. and you go, okay, look, um, I think Nat's done pretty good with some investments and some homes, and uh, so lucky lucky for him there, or good for him there, but um, no, the the degree I would have really liked to, to have is like a business degree, you mm-hmm. know, and to be able to go, okay, look, outside of surfing, I have this degree. You can't take that away from me. I can take that anywhere, any industry, and, you know, I always tripped out on guys like Tinkus, you know. He mm-hmm. like, next he was running uh, O'Neill's years ago, and then boom, he was running a company. It was like, wow, what's Element? Element, yeah. You know, I'm like, wow, mm-hmm. that's rad. He's over there at Element. And then now a he's bikini back o- company, and he's yeah, back at O'Neill again, right? Yeah, exactly. And yeah. so, um, and, or some people that could just go out and do a whole nother industry outside the market, you know? And so that's, um, like I'm studying uh, real estate right now and that's sort mm-hmm. of what's been challenging me and that's where I... Well, and you've been tinkering with real estate for a long time. Yeah, well, I've, I've went into it one time almost full guns and, and pulled, said, hey, look, I'm gonna, I'm gonna do this and then I failed miserably, you know? I couldn't get through the program, I didn't get through the testing. Mm. Uh, this time with, uh, with my fiance, she's been able to, uh, you know, keep me on the books Mm-hmm. Keep me on the program, study every day, do my tests, do my uh, compu crams, and just really try to focus on what they're trying to teach me. Because um, right. I, I want to challenge myself. You know, yeah. I want to do something different. Yeah. And is it hard to uh, study when it's head high and oh, offshore? I missed, I missed a lot of surfs this uh, winter studying. Mm-hmm. Um, and I, I, and I told myself I'd say yes more to things, you know, and yes to more things other than surfing. You know? Right. If you asked me tomorrow, told me, hey, look, let's go to Yosemite next week, I, and there's a south swell. I'm probably going to say, yeah, let's go. Dude. Mm-hmm. Let's go to Yosemite. You know, I've had enough cell sweat. And how, let's catch up on your physical, because your physical yep. uh, nature right now, because yep. you, you had hip replacements. Yeah, double hip. Double hip replacements, yep. which is a extreme it's, operation. Uh, pretty invasive, yeah. And, but one hip didn't do so well, right? Is that well, one, one of one's them, better? Well, one's better than the other, but they're both. They both work well. Mm-hmm. Um, I have some atrophy. I have a muscle that doesn't, you know, fire. Um, 
But look, I'm not. You're back. In, I'm back. I'm yeah. not in pain anymore. I can mm -hmm. I can do burpees and I can I can plank and do everything that I want to and do. And they're doing those they're doing those hip replacements like like they no they knock them out. Going through McDonald's, you know, it's a big it's right in right. and out. Would you suggest that to people yeah. that have bad hips? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, I don't know I would do what Neil Kearney did, where he did them both at the same time, two mm -hmm. at once. Uh, but yeah, I think people that uh, are prolonging it and think that they can like do pain management, uh, they probably would be presently surprised how good it feels and how the, the epiphany they'd have, like, I should have done this earlier. Did it get so bad you couldn't surf? Yeah. With couldn't your hips? Couldn't sleep, couldn't have sex, couldn't do nothing. Wow. Yeah. You want huh. to break a man down? Take wow. away sex and sleep. Yeah, yeah, yeah. kill you, kill you. Yeah, quicker. Can <laughs> <laughs> I ask you this question? With yeah. the popularity of surfing right now, yeah. why why is the professional rank, the professional interest, growing along with it? You know, I don't I don't know why that is, and I don't know why. Or if you go by the ocean tonight, there's thousands of people surfing. Yeah, and my surf shop is struggling. Yeah. Oh, they and all so, are. Yeah, and so I don't I don't know where the disconnect is. I know that a lot of people are shopping on the computer. Yeah. I'm guilty of it too. You know, there's an Amazon box probably in my house right now. Uh, but I think people have found different avenues. Yeah. And um, there's so many different places to purchase surf goods now. Yeah. And with the influx of product after COVID, you know, everyone just bulked up and bulked up and bulked up. There's so much mm -hmm. surfboards. There's so much clothing that it's everywhere. Yeah. You know, there's a yeah. gray market now, and you know, the stuff could be in Costco tomorrow. You know, you know it's what? really trippy because it, yeah. growing up, you rode a local surfboard. Oh, you, yeah. You had a local surfboard shaper. Yeah. And if you didn't ride a local surfboard, you were you were an outsider, yeah. you know, or you were sponsored by somebody. But I remember when somebody um, rolled right. into town and they were riding a Southern California board. And I smell that right away around here, dude. Yeah. I smell it like when someone's burning weed that's not from here, I know right away. I'm yeah. like, that's out of town <laughs> weed, though. That's not Wave Rider Nursery. <laughs> You didn't go to Canada Cruz to get that, you know what I mean? Like, I, I, but that that's affects that affects surf shops. You, that affects everybody. Yeah, you had your ten boards, maybe one out of twenty boards. Well, growing yeah, yeah, growing up and working at Freeline, we had our customers. Yeah, they, they, you know, they were loyal customers. They would buy yeah. all their equipment you from there. Me, you see John, you buy yeah, 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 and it was high fives and yeah. surf yeah. stories, and it was about uh, the local pride, and yeah. it seems like that's kind of gone. But you know, I've talked yeah. to the surf shop owners, and Adam, you and I have talked about this. The industry is struggling right now. Yeah. But I don't get it because, like you said, there's 14,000 people yeah. down the street surfing. Yeah. I know. But, you know, the um, our Zen master, Jerry Lopez, decided to make entry-level boards, right? Mm -hmm. And I think that that right there in itself sort of s slowed down the, uh, the consumer buying. Right. You know. The Costco yeah. of Jerry Lopez. Costco is yeah. the largest surfboard manufacturer in the world. Do you know who that is? You know, say, hey, do you know who Jerry Lopez is? Mm -hmm. No. Yeah. Hey, no. Yeah. I mean, well, I, and congrats I, to Jerry I'm because the, he's making more power too. Yeah, he's making team, a lot of money man. and he deserves yeah. well, that. I mean, but I think he must I think he he, probably, he must have sat in that couch and thought about that decision for a while. Should I, should I do it? Oh, you know what? For about 5 seconds. You think so? Five seconds. He saw zeros and he went, you know what, this might be the biggest, you know, yeah. investment well, I've ever if we were to talk to Randy French, the founder of Surf Tech, yeah. I, uh, he worked with a bunch of different shapers. You know, he was one of the first ones too. to have a license yeah. branded where Robert August was one of his big yeah. guys. Robert August loved cashing those checks. Yeah. Oh yeah. He loved it. You know, and so a, a guy like Lopez loves to cash those checks. Yeah. And just hearing like his struggles with like lightning bolt during their heyday, and now he's right. able to cash out. I'm stoked for Jerry Lopez, you know. Um, um, yeah. But it's just unfortunate when you see the, the majority of people are are riding that board, you know. And then there's, you it's know, the mom and pop. It's cheap. Well, no, believe it. Right. I I have two of them. You know, right. I have two. You want to come mm -hmm. borrow one? I'll let yeah. you one. But, <laughs> <laughs> you know, it, you look. It's 150 bucks. I sell a, a BZ eight footer. For four hundred bucks, right. you know, in my shop. Mm -hmm. So I mean, and I'm a, I'm a mom. I got two kids. You know, I'm economical. I'm like, yeah. that's not a good deal. That's a good deal. Mm -hmm. You know, so that's what I think this new surfer is looking at. You know, yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. Well, you, uh, you always rode very high performance surfboards. Yeah. Oh yeah, I like a I like lot them. of Colettas. A lot of Colettas. Yeah, Colettas, John Carpers, Marys, yep. all of them. Yeah. Who's your all favorite? Do you have a favorite? Well, right now I'm riding uh, Pizels. I wrote hmm. a lot of Pizels. I'm riding some uh, Channel Islands. I like Britt Merrick's boards. Um, if I see somebody ripping and doing the type of surfing I, I like, I, I try to get on that board. Um, and then just fluff it up for a guy who's 53 and, and, and gotten got your hips. <laughs> well, you know, so I, we, you mentioned Britt Merrick, and I got to say, I give that guy a lot of credit. He's at every contest. 
Oh yeah, the guy you know, getting like, around. Yeah, he's really into it. Yeah, well, and it looks it's like amazing. it's a writer-owned brand now. So it does. Yeah, it, it looks like a writer-owned brand. So a lot of those guys have an invested interest in the company, and they all shred. And yeah, it's killer. It's really fun to see. We're talking about Channel Islands for those yeah. who are tuning in. Um, so you are uh, you're in your fifties now. Yeah, I'm in my fifties. You were the, the you were the kid. That's why I'm pivoting into real estate. Yeah, it's yeah, time, so right? Been, yeah, I've been hanging with Alistair Craft and just mm -hmm. really sort of sharpening, and, and my silk, my tongue just getting slurpy. <laughs> so, uh, are you going to, are you, and Alistair... Describe, describe what is slurpy. What's the slurpy? Well, slurpy. I mean, I, you have to have a somewhat of a, a small gift for the gab, right, yeah, in this business. That. Well, I mean, to a degree, but you got to get the right verbiage when you're in real estate. You know, you have to know the mm -hmm. right, you got to have the right terminology. So that's what I've been working well, on. You're the most stoked person that anybody could work to talk to. I mean, I don't, I'm not stoked at home. But I, I put on a pretty good front out here. Well, and I mean, a, real, a successful real estate person is based on their network. Yeah. And, and you have probably have a network in this town that is comparable to anybody based on your years of yeah. experience. That's why I asked Alistair. With, he works for Christie's uh, Sereno. Mm -hmm. And I was like, hey, you know, you know it's, it's, those are brands not from, from town. You know, do I need to go work for, like, you know, mm -hmm. David Lang or, you right. know, like, and he's like, you know, go check them all out. You know, I thought that was pretty cool because he just said, mm -hmm. hey, this is, and he's been mentoring me and I realized that's what I need more than anything. I need a mentor. I need somebody that I can work with, someone I can partner with. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. Someone who knows the business. Yeah, who knows the business and that has my best interest at heart, you know. Right. How far are you from um, being an agent? And well, I take my test this end of this next, and next uh, May. In the May. End of May. Like, and I'm are you passed. nervous about that test? Totally nervous. I've already considered fail. I'm already failed it in my own mind. I'm already like, I, like I'm neurotic about. It. I've already thought. Okay, I failed it. I'm already thinking I'm going to take it the second time because mm -hmm. my comp my comprehension when I take the test, I'm about 65, 70 percent. That's barely passing. Mm -hmm. Right. At the second time, I'm at 95 percent. So there's mm -hmm. that. So I, I'm. If I don't take it the first, if I don't pass it the first time, I'll pass it the second time. Yeah. Right. If not that, the third time. You know. Right. Yeah. You know, er earlier we were talking about. Um, some I mean, friends we grew up with yeah. that are almost homeless now. Yeah. But yeah. you were pretty, we, you know, you're talking about, you know, Nat Young getting his, his you know, stake in the ground. You yeah. did that. Yeah, yeah. I got Is a house that, pretty early. Yeah, you got early. a house pretty early. Yeah. Pretty and, uh, and you got to feel pretty good because you can stay in this community that you were raised yeah. in. And that's, yeah, I know. That's amazing. Really, I mean, I shouldn't be able to. I work at a surf shop. I shouldn't be able to afford where I live in the mm -hmm. neighborhood I live right. in. Uh, but I've had a house for twenty years, so I'm right. pretty lucky. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, totally. I mean, I see, I see a, friend, a lot of friends of mine man, that that are they're not drinking beers because they're happy right now. You know what I mean? They're drinking beers because they don't have a place to go. They their their house is gone, and and there goes the fucking neighborhood too. You know, like right. every place they had to rent is is now three mm -hmm. four grand. They can't afford to live here. So I feel lucky in that sense, and that's why. You know, I do help out a couple local guys too. You know, right? Yeah, yeah. And make sure that you there's know some my, couch surfing going yeah, on in your house, and there's space that, that mm -hmm. gets consumed. That you know, local people can live in my house. I'm stoked. You know, and I'm I'm luck I'm lucky to be able to provide. That's kind of you. Well, it's so different because when you were like, I met you when you were about eight years old, probably, and on 36th yeah. Avenue, we had a yeah. great commune great. of surfers yeah. there: Mark Go and Mark Tinkus. Mark Machado, Hank Baker, um, Hank Baker, my, at our place, Brett, Brett Rose. Rose. Yeah, we Swinger. had some great people. Yeah. But these were all people that were paying like three hundred and fifty bucks a month. Yeah, you know, like the, it was. Brett Rose was doing it on tips. He could pay his rent on yeah, tips. Yeah, right. And it was so different. And you drive yeah. through Pleasure Point now. It there's no kids renting houses in Pleasure no, Point. No, 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 no. Yeah, it's there's so not different. Like a, there's not a four pack of bros no. like oh, we got this stag house over on thirty fourth. <laughs> yeah, no, no and way. we were rage, having raging parties. Like my mom was. Terrified, I lived in the surf ghetto. Yeah, she was it like, was. Play "Hey, hon." Yeah, she goes, "I don't know if this is safe." I'm like, yeah. "I don't care. I love it." You know, yeah. it's you so know, I different. Really like the, uh, you know, there was Gordon, there was mm -hmm. Bobby, the uh, the the he she. You know, oh yeah, were, yeah. It was like they had so many different characters up there, mm -hmm. and uh, you could be yourself. You could be Acid Dan with a parrot on your shoulder and just walk right. down the neighborhood, and people mm -hmm. were like, "There's Dan." Right. You know, it, it, was, it, just, it was very it was different. Very, very different. And yeah. There wasn't hundred thousand dollar cars in every driveway. There was. Five hundred dollar cars right. in every driveway. It was a totally different. But you know time. what? But the people who are out there now don't get that. Don't, no, but look, don't. nowadays I, I like that. You know, I, I go down there. It does suck because I don't know anybody. Yeah. But my daughter can walk down the street mm -hmm. and yeah. not get accosted. Right. Mm -hmm. You know, right. uh, my mom and my, my grandmother can walk to Pleasure Point and not yeah, see yeah. something terrible mm -hmm. or hear something outrageous. Yeah. You know, so that the gentrification or whatever it's been, you know, yeah. it's like. 
it's it does suck, but there's positives to it as well. You know. Well, and congratulations for getting your house. It's beautiful. You're in a, you're a you know two yeah, blocks lucky. from the beach. And, yeah, lucky. And uh, I feel the same way. You know, it's uh, yeah. you know I work hard. Yeah. You know, I, I always had this theory. Maybe you can agree. Uh, there was a time in Pleasure Point that there was a lot of colorful people at the guardrail. Yeah, yeah. At first peak. That's well. That's nice and said. and uh, and there was kind of two factions. There was a faction that looked at the ocean. And we're stoked on people catching good waves. Yeah. And then there was a faction that looked at this cars <laughs> and bird dogged everybody with a, t- a tall boy. Those guys don't have houses. No, right. they don't. Yeah, the guys that looked this way, a couple of them, they, pulled, they, it. they pulled it. You know, yeah. and they're still here. And it's yeah. it's a really unique analogy. Yeah. And probably every surf spot in California would be the same way. I would think so. I think every coastal mm. community that was you know had. The surfers living it in the 70s and 80s that once the 90s came in and the 2000s yeah it was next level um, and if you weren't prepared for the storm you 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 weren't a part of it you know hmm. yeah we're lucky to be a part of the upside here like i i watched you know the price of homes go up and i'm like god that sucks if you don't have one because you never get in here no you're never gonna buy a house no. here you know and, and um yeah you know, that's why i want to have small kind of generational wealth to hand my kids something or kids something you know so mm-hmm. they got a place to go it's not like sell it move to fresno you know? Right. Well, I, I was listening to a radio show today, and this uh, guy was complaining about the cost of houses and how no one can buy a house. And I, I immediately thought about all of the people that are going to inherit these houses. Yeah. Because it's all generational wealth, right? Yeah. So even though houses aren't affordable, the kids of these people yeah. right. are going to be very successful based on their real estate holdings. Yeah. I, I flew home on, from Oregon. In a trust. Yeah. yeah. I flew home from Oregon last night, and the guy next to me is moving to the Philippines. His mom and dad died. The house he grew up in, in the middle of eastern Oregon, he sold it, and he's moving to the Philippines. I go, what did you sell it for? I got $148,000 for it. That's what he told me. He's all stoked. Yeah, totally stoked. He's moving to the Philippines, two eighty a month for his apartment he's going to move. But I was like, $148,000 for a house. So you're, there are places that you can do that. Yeah. <laughs> You had that amount of equity this last year in your house. Exactly. You know what I mean? No, like, my neighbor just built a mega McMansion yeah. next door. My house went up $100,000. You did, huh? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. They, built, they built this giant glass I'm glad I'm your neighbor because mine went up too. <laughs> yeah, we all did. Yeah. I know. And but, by the way, everybody, we are neighbors, which yeah. is awesome. But that's yeah. why I feel for my friends who, who don't have a piece of the pie here because I know that what they're feeling is fucking right. not good, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, as far as the uh, surf culture goes, yeah. w- what do you see the future happening with surf? Do you have you put much thought into what, like, ten years? What are surfing? Yeah, I thought about it a little bit. You know, uh, the way that these pools are coming up to all around the globe and inland areas, mm-hmm. uh, the uh, the surf culture, uh, and the biggest upside of surfing is going to be these new areas, these new hubs uh, like Waco, mm-hmm. uh, wherever they are. That that's where that's where these surf brands are going to find their biggest upside. So. It might be a nice injection for surf, mm-hmm. but we're going to start seeing all these other brands come into places because it is Texas. It is right. Oklahoma. Mm-hmm. It Arizona. is in the middle of Japan, Arizona. Mm-hmm. You know, like what, what is their style and culture there? You know, mm-hmm. like, uh, it's like North Shore all over again. Totally. The movie. Like we're going to go someplace and it's going to be cowboy hats and they're mm-hmm. going to have pink shirts on and they're gonna, this is going to be their beach. surf culture. Yeah. At the I'm beach. Sure you can play the beach boys. Well, yeah. you know, I just saw and footage of that out. new uh, Kelly Slater Park in Dubai. All the time. It is insane, Neil. Insane. It's a way longer wave than yeah. the ranch. I know, and, and the it's ranch bigger. Is long. Yeah. yeah, it's bigger and it's longer. It's yeah. an incredible thing. Yeah, you know, and you look at Palm Springs. You look at yeah. uh, what Fig's doing in Arizona. There's the the wave pool thing. Yeah. is really picking up. I know. I was talking to uh, Shane Beshin in Hawaii, who's telling me he's got his fingers in a couple of those pools. One's in Arizona, I think, mm-hmm. where, by where Michelle Shino lives. Uh, but the other was uh, the way that these flow riders are, and these uh, and these flow waves. These just yeah. singular waves, mm-hmm. like. It's just opening up for the crossover between all of these sports now. We're strapped in, snowboarder, skateboarder, surfer, wake surfing, wakeboarding. Now it's all like all coming together and you're seeing like like a twelve year old girl from China doing flips. Yeah, ripping. Right. Ripping and surfing mm-hmm. in a pool. Right. Now can't catch a wave very well with her mm-hmm. arms, but She's got the rotation yeah. down, you know, yeah. and she's a gold medalist, you know, so well, the, that's, 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 that's where surfing's going. Like it's gonna be, the water. Well, and like yeah. surfing is going abstract. That is a, uh, it's so structured, you know, you look at skateboarding, you can ride the same bowl over and over again. You look yeah. at, you know, snowboarding, you can ride the same half pipe over and over again. Surfing's really hard because you have to catch the waves. Yeah. And what's happening now is that the people are training 
on the same wave over and over and over again now. Yeah, repetitively, and they're getting really good. Did you, you've been to the surf ranch? Yeah, I've been there like like three it? times. Yeah, I mean, I don't like it for 50 grand a day. Right. You know, the day that we could all go there and we spend, like, to say the whole day would be five grand for 20 of us, and we're, we're having mm. beers and burritos and surfing, and you don't, like, feel like... Five hundred dollars a yeah. wave. You're like, right. oh my yeah. god, there's a new surfboard every wave. So if you fall, you're just so you're just fun. like, was that a good one? What <laughs> <laughs> was it a good one? <laughs> the video's in there, dude. <laughs> we got you. It's the most nerve wracking thing. Five, four, yeah. CT three. You're like, <laughs> boop, 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 boop. you're like forty guys lined up. You're back in a cold water. You bring heat. your you bring your lady there to watch you surf. Like, whoa, this is like no pressure. Yeah. Like, uh, yeah. So I mean, I want to go to a place like Waco where it is. Um, you get a hundred waves, you pay a couple hundred mm -hmm. bucks, you know. Right. You, it's like you, a lift ticket. Yeah. You go see yeah. the Branch Davidian mm -hmm. while you're out there, see David Koresh's place. <laughs> <laughs> and might as well. Oh, that's a, of all places. Of all places. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, well, no, that's, you know, that's it. Well, I see surfing going in another direction because it's, uh, it's tapped out in, in the area in which it is, you mm -hmm. know. Um, right. I think different formats of surfing mm -hmm. are going to happen, different formats of surfing. Like, I like them. Uh, it was a, like a surf and turf where they did uh, wakeboarding, not wakeboarding, but snowboarding, surfing, you yeah. know, all those cross. The Don Zabo contest. Yeah. Like, yeah. like okay, you should, you know, I remember like Chris Miller could surf and skate, you right. know, like a double mm -hmm. threat, you know, and then he also snowboards. Right? So, no, we, yeah. did, we actually did one of those in my backyard once. It was great. And Kyle Boothman won. He surfed and skated better than anybody. Yeah, that's awesome. You know, it's interesting you say that because you know I just got back from Bend, Oregon, and there's a wave there. And yeah. There's like there's like a surf culture on the river there. Right. There's shapers there yeah. that shape boards. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's it's just so interesting. And and you're right. Like I feel like the surf industries can create these hubs. Yeah. For the future to expand their growth. Yeah. I mean, and they have to embrace it. You know, surfing has been very narrow-minded. Like, oh, you got straps on. <laughs> You know, mm -hmm. you know, you're like Garrett McNamara. No, we don't like that guy. Oh, sorry. No. Yeah. Laird can't take a picture of him. He's got to, you know, like, you got to sign the waiver. You know? <laughs> so it does like, yeah, surfing is going to like, and look, everyone's thirsty for surfing still, you know, like, like I said, it's thousands of people out in the lineup. Something's going to give, we'll find something in the future for surfing that like, obviously the publicity's out there on it, you know, right. it just doesn't, hasn't translated. Um, Eventually. Has it connected? Has, has it, the popularity of all the people has it connected with? Yeah, like look, every other commercial you see has got something about surfing on it or beach lifestyle, yeah. beach culture. Um, yeah, you know, it's just it is what it is now, and you just gotta go. Okay, look, surfing doesn't have as much money as it does as it used to, mm -hmm. and uh, if you like surfing because you love it, keep doing it. If not, and right. Yeah, well, it's interesting because you know I've, we have a little from. store in Capitola Village. Mm -hmm. The people who come to the beach are so stoked. Yeah. Like, it's like the best day of their life. It's like Disneyland yeah. to go to the beach. And I remember being a kid, how awesome it was Dope. to be able to have a day at the yeah. beach, you yeah. know? And so I always feel like that's going to be important. Um, and I also like right now in the surf industry, it's okay to ride anything. Well, yeah. Well, yeah. You know? Oh, Which yeah, is yeah. cool. Yeah. Because it used to be you would be ostracized for riding some things. Yeah, and Santa Cruz, was pick, Santa Cruz picked up on that late, like all the hipster stuff. Right. It wasn't up until mm -hmm. just like recently. You know that uh, you can ride I mean, a square surfboard. Like, yeah, like Darshan has been doing it forever, so mm -hmm. he's 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 an anomaly. Mm -hmm. right? Like Darshan's been riding this forever, but that has just caught on. You know, everyone's riding all that equipment, and right. you're seeing a lot of people ride. Uh, you know, like no fins, twin fins, single fins. Yeah. You know, and you know they're ah, there's a lot of dumbing it down. You know, but everyone's out there for a different reason. You right. Know? Well, I call it feeling groovy. Yeah, everyone's like a, a certain, some a people are out style. there for the glide. You yeah, know? Like, yeah. Some people just want to look good, and the, and I know that because their hands are all looking style. good. Yeah, like, mm -hmm. like yeah. Well, you that's know? I, that, you know, let's take it back. That's a trait of of Adam. You're surfing. Your hands were always in the right spot. Well, I was very consciously aware. You but mean that was your? I wasn't even aware of it. Before I was consciously aware, you know mm -hmm. what I mean? Like, yeah, yeah I was trying, everyone's just, well, I was just, everyone's trying to copy Tom Kerr or fucking mm -hmm. Shane Haran or Mark Richards, right? So. Right. Well, I would always say, and I, I don't want to blow you up too much, but I think yeah. Adam had one of the best cutbacks in Santa Cruz uh, history. Nice I, I, I can I, barely I honestly, do one now. Well, <laughs> but I will say that um, I just feel like you, you know, your front side roundhouse yeah. was just a thing of beauty. Well, if you watch a lot of the pros, too, you see that they had one maneuver that they were able to score, like even not to put myself in their 
But look at how Parko or McFanny, they just had a good rap. Right. Uh-huh. Yeah. And on rail. On rail. And pushing hard. Yeah. And, so and I got to, yeah, I like that type of surfing. Richard yeah. Cram style surfing. Yeah. Right. And then you would come out of that and be right back on rail yeah. again. Yeah. And then whoop, next, and that yeah. was, I think, the key to your success. Is he senior enough to see? Absolutely. We'll do it He's right senior. now. Yeah. What well, a- we AARP? Need- no. <laughs> Not yet. Senior? We have two questions for us. We have two questions for us. I like the two questions. The first question we're going to ask okay. you tonight, Adam, is what was your favorite decade and why? Um, Davis decade. Um, it's got to be the '80s for me, and it, it's very. Uh, it's like a deja vu. I hear songs to this day. You know, like if. Um, um, yeah, the '80s, the straight uh, that whole era to me really. You know, the music, the surfing, the the characters that were involved. Sort of, uh, I like that block of time. It was very influential. And that's a very common time to hear because it was yeah. such a pure time yeah. to be in Santa Cruz. There was all the problems that we have here in this town. Ninety percent of them didn't exist in the eighties. Yeah, it was. Yeah. I feel like that was the end you know, yeah. of like pure Santa Cruz. Yeah, but you know, I do look back and go, we ruined some guys. Like our group, uh, we we traveled in like five, six, eight, ten guys, right? Surfers like the nightmare. Uh, so the older group goes, there goes the neighborhood, you know, these guys in pink <laughs> suits, little surfboards and fucking chirping, you know, and, I, and so, uh, and I was, I was absorbed in it. I didn't realize what we were doing, you know, I just show up in photos and just, what, I, well, there's people here, yeah. like, fuck, didn't even know. <laughs> but, so now I see that, you know, I'm that guy outside, here comes six kids, two filmers on the beach, you know, and they're, and, and I'm, mm-hmm. it's their time, you know, mm-hmm. I just paddle down or I hoot, want somebody in a wave and get one wave and I'm out of there. Yeah, uh, yeah, but well, I'll, it's good I, that you know that because there's I'm, some people who get real grumpy. <laughs> well, I'm, I don't. I Bro, remember. Mm-hmm. I, I, rem- I remember. You know, mm-hmm. I, I haven't forgotten. You know. Well, and, and you were a fr- in the '80s. You were frothing. Well, yeah, and all yeah. of our whole group was. You know, I mean, you would surf like eight hours a day. Yeah, we just surf all day. Yeah, yeah. it wasn't insane. That okay, was so one question. So on top of that, the next one, Neil, give it to him. Uh, give us your favorite day. Surfing that you've ever had. My favorite day is surfing. Yeah. I won, when I'm winning the cold water classic. I mean, if it's competition. Whatever. Yeah. Maybe shoes. Uh, no, fuck. Any day I get to go surfing. What year was it? What year, what year did you win cold water? In the two, uh, early 2000s. Yeah. Yeah. Um, How much was that? That was a pretty good payout that day. Five grand or something? What yeah, you get? four or five grand. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe. Yeah. Yeah. Fuck yeah. Did you spend it all that night? I mean, some of it. <laughs> he pull a flea? <laughs> no. But I, I've been a couple of fleas parties. He was yeah. like, he'd throw a heater. Yeah, you know, flea was famous for flea ruining throw, all of his ruin, winnings. Yeah, I just <laughs> rent a room at, at the Dream Inn and just throw the take it out down. The <laughs> <laughs> Those uh, are some scary times. I, I think I was just thinking about what you're saying about surfing. Uh, the first days I got to surf with my daughters, I think, were the most uh, yeah. gratifying. After, sure. after doing it for myself... That becomes that. That's the best time, yeah. you know. Yeah, yeah. that's really yeah. cool. Yeah, it's, it's, I think it's a lot of fun, and just surfing with kids, you know. And then uh, I was going to ask you: is, is there anyone that you want to thank for, uh, you know, uh, helping you out, or people that? No, I got all kinds of them. Yeah, yeah, a couple yeah. of them that you want to just give a, a shout out to. Yeah, uh, Maya Negre, uh, my mom, Jeannie Pifferini, uh, Alistair Craft. Um, yeah, you know the people that put up with me, my kids, my neighbors. Uh, Richard, my mailman, uh, you know, the people that deal with us every day. You know, mm-hmm. I like to thank those people. I saw Meyer yeah. class that, the day that we were, a couple days ago. I, I was going to go up to her and say, what happened? <laughs> Sorry. I, 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 didn't, I didn't talk to her. I just didn't yeah. say a word. I just said, hi, good morning. Nice to see you. No, I want to thank, too, the people that have given me the, uh, like, uh, who did things for me. Like this guy, David McIntyre, did a lot of cool mm-hmm. stuff for me. Doc Scott's done rad stuff for me. Uh, I was really stoked to uh, work with uh, Novak, Richard Novak, um, Randy French, uh, working with Pat O'Neill, learned a lot of stuff with those guys. Um, uh, yeah, I just feel pretty fortunate that I was able to, you know, be in Santa Cruz at this time, was able to meet all the, like, heavy, really iconic locals, you know, from the 70s and 80s, and was a part of a nice little group, and uh, I had a great block of time, like you said, during the 90s, mm-hmm. uh, 80s and 90s. And now it's awesome being a little older and seeing what these kids are doing and surfing now. I just wish there was more future there for them. You and know? Barney was right. in your life. Barney was one of my best buddies, mm-hmm. you know. Mm-hmm. We were polar opposites, you know. Uh, yeah. And, uh, yeah, I miss him. I miss him a lot. You know, I miss Vince Collier, Barney. Um, like, a lot of my best friends have passed away. Yeah. Well, you yeah. used to live with Benji, Wally. You lived at Wally's house. Yeah. Yeah. 
all those guys. That would be a fun event to run. Not not so much to, uh, a sad memorial event, but have like a, bring back the Yana No Chord Classic and have it like a memorial. So there is mm -hmm. like a a day that we're you know what uh, the Day of the Dead. Mm -hmm. You know, like one of those. Yeah. Have a fun. That'd be fun. Wouldn't celebrate it? the life of somebody. Yeah. yeah. That would be fun. Would be, yeah. Be... Well, as we get into our fifties. There's a lot of paddle outs, you know? Too I've, many I've, of them, I've bro. seen you at a lot of paddle outs. A lot outs. of paddle outs. Yeah. Yeah. That's why when I see people nowadays, I was on the North Shore a couple weeks ago, and people were like really nice, you know? It's come to the point now where you see somebody you haven't seen for 30 years. You're mm -hmm. like, dude, how? Yeah. What's Good to up, see dude? you. How you Good been? to see you. What, what have you been doing? How you pulled this off? You know? And then they tell you some like normal stuff, mm -hmm. you know? Uh, so yeah. This is a, being in your 50s isn't that bad. I mean, unless you're in a lot of pain or broke. Right. Exactly. Really way over that. Can I say a funny story about Adam? Mm. Oh. Uh, <laughs> we went, my crew tow, he passed away. Yeah. And we had his uh, paddle out uh, at the lane. Oh, you yeah. and, uh And his son is named uh, Titan. Titan, yeah. So He's and, a monster. So Titan came out on, on, on our boat. And uh, and they, we had everybody around the boat, and we were gonna dump the ashes. And yeah. Titan dumped them, and they landed on yeah, you. On me. <laughs> yeah, I know. I looked over, and I'm Adam has like he has raccoon eyes, yeah, I got and he's co by that. he's covered in Cruto's ashes. <laughs> I see one right there. <laughs> There's one up there, yeah. I remember him when he was with me when I jumped out of the plane, which is a fucking. It's you were in a diaper though. I was in a diaper. You were in a diaper. Yeah. yeah. You jumped out of a plane in a diaper. Yeah. Was it a bet or something? It was, I think, the Santa Cruz Ways. They wanted me to do stupid. But we did the roller skates on the yeah. roller skates on surfing. Yeah. And I hated heights. Totally, I'm totally. A, I mean, getting up the ladder here. Uh uh But I, Tyler was getting into that, right? And so he, 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 he had, yeah, he had like so many jumps. Have you jumping out of a plane? Oh, fuck no, uh, no. Hmm. Anyway, he talked me into it, and he don't know why he was there. I was there because he's like, hey, you might want to do this. And I went and saw the rickety plane. I'm like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> The rickety plane had no Did side walls. That? It was like this shit. Sound like a Did you go up in it? No. I, I'm all like, oh, go, where are you guys going to land? I'll go over there. <laughs> That's too I was, much. So you had a lady friend with you, if I remember correctly. Lori Wallace was there. Oh, really? Yeah. Wow. You should do it again. But, uh uh we went right to that Mexican restaurant bar. It was just tequilas, huh? <laughs> Margies. Oh man, well, that's crazy. Well, well Adam, guys, thanks a lot for having me, man. Yeah, it's great, great to have you back. Yeah, you, I, sure. I, I, I love you like a brother. Yeah, man. TC. Yeah, you right know, it's, you and uh, uh, you're such an I, asset to our community. Oh, yeah. that's too kind. Yeah, and uh, I wish you the best in real estate. And, Thank you. Yeah. yeah, and how? And so next month, everyone who's yeah. watching, come check us out. Yeah. And yeah. uh, you'll get some business cards yeah. and start I'll have out. tons of business cards between myself and Alistair. Mm -hmm. we'll 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 yeah. And Maya, Maya's also going to get her. her she's doing her it too. Well, yeah, I think she's just doing it to get me through it. Right. You know, Helping one of those things like yeah, yeah. she's really yeah. smart. Yeah, she's really smart. <laughs> like, you know what's? The, I'm tr I'm testing a lot more than she is. I'm studying a lot more, and, and she just she can pick it up pretty quick. Well, congrats uh, to being engaged to Maya. Wow, that's that? awesome. Um, you I will. So okay. as we as we sign off, everybody, yep. uh, want to thank Tyler Fox for having us on Santa Cruz Waves. Yeah, Neil, what number show was this? Nine thirty. Nine thirty with the one and only much. Adam. Yeah, Neil, well, hey, thank, thank you so you much. Yeah, yeah. That was so much. good to have you here. And that, that night, well, that night, that night, I had I do have the video of that night. Just put a little slice so of it in. <laughs> we'll, we'll live it in for me. It yeah. was fun. We had a great night. Okay, yeah. everybody, All thanks right. for tuning in. We'll see you next time on the Off Lip Radio Show. Good Coming night. Up.